اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم لسن نمبر 206 سورة العنکبوت مثل الذین اتخذوا من دون اللہ اولیاء The example of those people who take allies other than Allah. Those people who depend on other than Allah. Awliya is the plural of the word wali. And who is wali? Someone who protects you, who guards you, who takes care of your affairs. And basically wali is someone who is qareeb, someone who is very close to you. They help you. You can depend on them. They are like your guardian, your protector. In times of need, you ask for their assistance. You ask for their help. And it's expected that if you ever suffer from a problem, they will remove it. So the example of those people who take awliya other than Allah, they rely on other than Allah. They expect hope and relief from other than Allah. They depend on other than Allah. If you look at it in the previous ayat, what do we see? Qarun, he relied on what? His wealth and his knowledge. Fir'aun and Haman, they relied on what? On their power. So the example of people who rely on other than Allah in any way. We see that the people of Ibrahim, they relied on what? Awsan. Idols whom they used to worship. So what is their example? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, كَمَثَلِ Their example is like that of الْعَنْكَبُوتِ Of the spider. How? That the spider, what does it do? It تَخَذَتْ It took, it made, بَيْتًا A house. That a spider, it made a house for who? For itself. Why? To take shelter in. But this bait. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِنَّ And indeed, أَوْهَنَ buyuti, The weakest of all houses. أَوْهَن وَاوْهَا نُون وَهَن وَهَن means weakness. And أَوْهَن أَفْعَلُ تَفْضِيل Most weak. The weakest. The frailest. And وَهَن is basically to be weak with regards to something in the physical sense. So it's not the weakness of determination. وَهَن but wahan is what? Physical. Or it is to express weakness in character even sometimes. If you remember earlier that the dua of Zakariya alayhi salam, Rabbi inni wahan al azmu minni. So what is wahan used over there for? The weakness of bones. Physical weakness. So wa inna awhan al buyuti, the weakest of all homes, all houses, is what? لَبَيْتُ الْعَنْكَبُوتِ is surely the house of the spider. لَوْ كَانُوا يَعْلَمُونَ If only they knew. If only they realized that the house of the spider is the weakest house, they would never ever rely on it. And likewise, they would never ever rely on other than Allah. If you look at it, many many creatures, animals, birds, people, in different areas, different places, they build their houses. And what's the objective of a house? What's the purpose? That it provides you shelter. When it rains, you can be there and be safe from the rain. When it's cold, you can go inside and be safe from the cold. When it's hot, you can go inside and be safe from the heat. This is the main purpose of a house. Which is why a house, if it does not fulfill this, then it's not supposed to be a house. Isn't it? A house is supposed to be a place of sukoon, a place where you find shelter, peace, security. But the house of the spider, the spider web, does it give any shelter? To the spider or to anything else? No. It doesn't have a ceiling. It doesn't have walls. It doesn't have windows. It doesn't have doors. It's completely exposed. Completely exposed. That if the spider is there, it's exposed immediately. Before you see the web, what do you see? The spider. Or you see whatever is stuck in that web. So, the weakest of all houses is the house of Al-Ankabut. Also, if you look at it, any other house, it's not that easy to uproot it. Like for example, a nest. Is it easy to just pick it up and throw it? 
know many times the way the birds have made their nests, it's very, very difficult to you know, remove them from the branch and then get rid of them. Similarly, if it's a beehive, it's not easy to remove it. But if when it comes to a spider web, how easy is it to remove it? Very, very simple. Isn't it? You take a duster that's extremely light in weight and you just touch the web with it and that's it. It's gone. Finished. My dad was traveling recently and his car was closed for several days. So the other day we went and I actually saw a spider web in his car. And we were amazed that where did the spider come from and how did it manage to make such a huge web in the car, inside the car. He said, no problem. He opened the windows and the web was gone. As he was driving, the web looked so beautiful as I saw it. But within moments, within seconds, literally it was gone, finished. I couldn't even tell where it went. This is how weak the spider web is. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that those people who rely on other than Allah, whether it is that they're worshipping them, or they're asking them for rizq, or they're expecting that they will come in use, they will help them in time of need, they can rely on them, they can count on them. All of those beings whom a person trusts upon other than Allah, the example is like Al-Ankabut. Who does the Ankabut refer to? The mushrik, the one who is doing shirk. The one who is relying on other than Allah. And the bait, the house, what does that refer to in the example? The awliya, those who are relied on. So the spider, if it tries to take refuge in its web, can it find any shelter? Can it find any refuge? Not at all. وَإِنَّ أَوْهَنَ الْبُيُوتِ لَبَيْتُ الْعَنْكَبُوتِ لَوْ كَانُوا يَعْلَمُونَ If only they knew. If only they understood that the house of the spider is the weakest one. And if only they understood that all the awliya whom a person can rely upon are extremely weak, they cannot help you, they would never rely on them. Just think about it. Imagine you're walking somewhere. Imagine you're walking in your house somewhere and as you're walking you trip over something and all of a sudden you see a spider web on the side. Will you hold on to it? Will you? As you're falling, will you hold on to it for help? For support? No, not at all. Because if you do, you're going to fall down with it. And in fact, that web is going to be stuck in your hands and it's going to be another problem to get rid of that web. So how is it that when it comes to this, we don't rely on spider webs? We don't. But when it comes to any other thing, we rely on our phones or we rely on our computers or we rely on anything else. They're not sufficient. They cannot help you. لَوْ كَانُوا يَعْلَمُونَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ Indeed Allah يَعْلَمُ He knows مَا يَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِهِ مِن شَيْءِ He knows whatever they invoke besides Him مِن شَيْءٍ of anything. Allah knows whatever people call upon no matter what it is. No matter what it is. There are people who call upon stars. Others who pray to idols that they have made themselves. Others who Pray to people who are dead. Others who pray to angels. Allah knows all those beings whom they call upon. مِن دُونِهِ مِن شَيْءٍ وَهُوَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ And He is the mighty and He is the wise. He is Al-Aziz. Why is this name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned over here? Because all those beings whom they are calling upon besides Allah, can they help people in any way? No way. They cannot help them at all. Who can help them? Someone who is Aziz. And who is that? Only Allah. Everything else that people call upon, they are not Aziz. They don't have power. They don't have might. They don't have ability. And who has absolute might and authority? Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when He is Al-Aziz, then why rely upon others? Why not rely only on Him? And He is Al-Hakim. And remember that Al-Hakim is from Hikmah as well as Hukum. Hikmah meaning wisdom and hukum meaning judgment, decision. So Al-Hakim, the one who makes the judgment and the one who implements the judgment. So why rely on someone who does not even have the knowledge that they would decide correctly with regards to you? Rely on someone who has the ability to judge and also implement that judgment, carry it out. إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَعْلَمُ مَا يَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِهِ مِن شَيْءٍ وَهُوَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ وَتِلْكَ الْأَمْسَالِ And these examples, الْأَمْسَالِ plural of 
مثل that these are the examples نضربها we strike it we present it for who لناسي for the people these examples we present them for the people why so that they can understand however does everyone understand does everyone get it no وَمَا يَعْقِلُهَا And none understands it إِلَّا الْعَالِمُونَ Except the knowledgeable ones. العالمون Plural of عالم And who is عالم? The one who has ilm. Now who is this عالم? وَمَا يَعْقِلُهَا إِلَّا الْعَالِمُونَ It's only the knowledgeable people who will understand these examples. Which ilm is this? Ilm of Allah. Ilm of Deen. Ilm of Akhira. Because ilm is not just about knowing. Ilm is about acting on the knowledge as well. So those people who do amal on their ilm that they have, they will truly understand this. And they will implement it. They will take benefit from this example. Because there are many people who know a lot about spider webs, who know a lot about spiders, the different different types of webs and different different types of spiders and so on and so forth. They have a lot of ilm. Isn't it? But still they don't understand this concept. So who will understand? The one who has real knowledge. If you look at it, the spider, what does it do? As it makes a web, and as the female spider mates with the male one, after mating, what does it do? Kills the male spider. What does it show? Extreme selfishness. And if you look at it, a person who does shirk, why does he do shirk? Why? What's his objective? Is it to really please the one who can help you, who can aid you? No, it's only to get worldly benefit. If I can find worldly benefit from this God, I will go to Him. If I can find worldly benefit from this river, I will go and pray to that river. Isn't it? Which is why they move from one to the other. So there is only selfishness involved in this. خَلَقَ اللَّهُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ Allah has created the heavens and the earth. How? بِالْحَقْ With the truth. What does it mean by that? That Allah has created the heavens and the earth for a just cause, for a right purpose, with balance, with proportion, in the correct way. And in fi dhalika la ayatan, in that is surely a sign for who? Lil mu'mineen, for those people who believe. There is a sign in what? In what? In the creation of the heavens and the earth, bil haq. So خَلَقَ اللَّهُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ بِالْحَقِّ إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَةِ What does ذَلِكَ refer to? The خَلُقْ of السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ بِالْحَقِّ There is an ayah but who will benefit? لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ For those who believe. Now what's the ayah in this? What's the sign in this? If you relate this ayah with the previous ayat, what is the lesson that we understand from the fact that خَلَقَ اللَّهُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ بِالْحَقِّ What do we understand from this? That if you look at it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is the khaliq of the heavens and the earth. And on the other hand, there are these awliya, and their example is like that of the web. What is the web? It's nothing. Nothing. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is the khaliq of the heavens and the earth. So who should be relied upon? The web? No. What can the web bring you? Nothing. Nothing at all. And the Khaliq of the heavens and the earth, He can give you everything. He can protect you. He can preserve you. He can help you. He can assist you. Therefore, Allah is the only one who is worthy of worship. Inna fi dhalika la ayatan lil mu'mineen. So what's the ayah? That Allah alone is the one who is worthy of worship. And if you look at it, what is mentioned in this ayah, this last ayah, that خَلَقَ اللَّهُ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ بالحق, That Allah has created the heavens and the earth with haq. Meaning for a just purpose, with balance, in the right way, in the correct way. And in the heavens and the earth there are also so many things that Allah Himself has created. And the heavens and the earth and everything in the heavens and the earth, what is going on with them? They're constantly changing. Isn't it? They're constantly changing from one state to the other. But that is also how bilhaq. That is also for a just reason. However Allah has made something, in whatever way and however it is changing, there is a reason behind that. Sometimes we do not understand the reason, we do not understand the wisdom, but there is. There is definitely a reason. 
And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He has created so much, and He is causing all of these things to change and improve and grow and finish and multiply and increase, what does it show? His great power, His great ability. That everything is in His control. He is the supreme power. And if you ask Him, and if He helps you, then you are fine. And if you turn away from Him, that nothing at all can help you. We learn in Surah Ali Imran, Ayah 101, that وَمَنْ يَعْتَصِمْ بِاللَّهِ فَقَدْ هُدِيَ إِلَى صِرَاطٍ مُسْتَقِيمٍ That whoever holds firmly to Allah has indeed been guided to a straight path. But who? The one who holds firmly to Allah. Not the one who turns away from Allah. Not the one who relies on his wealth, on his education, on his power, on his family. No. In Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayah 256, we learn, فَمَنْ يَكْفُرْ بِالطَّاغُوتِ وَيُؤْمِنْ بِاللَّهِ فَقَدْ اسْتَمْسَكَ بِالْعُرْوَةِ الْوِسْقَى لَنْ فِصَامَ لَهَا That whoever disbelieves in Taghut and believes in Allah, he disbelieves in Taghut, he believes that they cannot help him at all. And who does he believe in? Allah. Then فَقَدْ اسْتَمْسَكَ بِالْعُرْوَةِ الْوِسْقَى Then he has grasped the most trustworthy handhold. He is holding on to something that will never ever break. لَنْ فِصَامَ لَهَا With no break in it. Just imagine you're hanging from something, you're holding on to something that's extremely weak. Like a spider web. The example that I gave you, that you're falling and you hold on to a spider web. Would it give you any support? Not at all. But if you hold on to Allah, then you're holding on to what? الْعُرْوَةُ الْوُسْقَى the most trustworthy handhold that لَنْفِصَامَ it will never ever break, never ever crack. We listen to the recitation and I have a few more things to tell you about this. If you look at it at the beginning of the surah, we learned وَوَصَّيْنَا الْإِنسَانَ بِوَالِدَيْهِ حُسْنًا People, what is their greatest support? Who is their greatest support? Their parents. Isn't it so? When you're a child, when you cannot do anything, who supports you? Who takes care of you? Your parents. As you grow older, who spends on you? Your parents. As you grow older, whose advice do you take? Your parents. Right? They are the greatest support for you out of all people. And many times, parents support their children unconditionally. Like, even if they disagree with them, what do they say? That, okay, it's your choice. I accept it, and I will support you. Many parents are like that. Other parents are not, but many parents are. But what do we see over there in that ayah? That wa in jahadaka li tushrika bi ma laysa laka bihi ilm fala tuti'huma. When you have the choice of either obeying your parents or obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then who should you rely on? Who should you turn to? Who should you obey? Who should you prefer? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because if you do rely on your parents at that time and obey them in disobedience to Allah, then will they support you? Will they be able to help you? Will they be able to protect you? No. Many times it happens that children, they die before their own parents and they cannot do anything to help them. They die in their own arms. Many times, children are suffering before their own parents, but the parents cannot do anything. They're failing, they're suffering, they cannot do anything. So if a person, at this point, he disobeys Allah just for the sake of his parents, will the parents be able to help him later on? No. And if he continues to rely on his parents, it's as though he is relying on a spider web. Later on, we learn in the surah about friends. That how can they help you? That friends, when they tell us, اتبعوا سبيلنا والنحمل خطاياكم Just do what we're doing, we'll take the burden. Put it on me. I'll take the blame. But will they take the blame? No. وَمَا هُمْ بِحَامِلِينَ مِنْ خَطَايَاهُمْ مِنْ شَيْءٍ They will not willingly carry at all. They will not willingly take the burden at all. So what do we see? That if a person, he relies on his friends, are his friends reliable? Are they reliable? Not at all. Many times, friends, they say, we are very close to you and we'll do anything for you and you have my support and I'll be with you. But what happens? When you're in trouble, they leave you. When they feel threatened, they leave you alone. They will save themselves first and they will not care about you. So, friends even, they're not reliable. And after friends, what do we learn? That Ibrahim, he told his people, 
that when they had taken their idols for worship, Ibrahim alayhi salam told the people, وَتَخْلُقُونَ إِفْكًا إِنَّ الَّذِينَ تَعْبُدُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ لَا يَمْلِكُونَ لَكُمْ رِزْقًا Those whom you invoke other than Allah, they cannot give you any rizq. فَبْتَغُوا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ الرِّزْقِ وَعْبُدُوهُ وَاشْكُرُوا لَهُ وَإِلَيْهِ تُرْجَعُونَ So if a person worships other than Allah, are they reliable? No. Even they are just like the spider web. Similarly, we see that people... You know, they have acquaintances, they befriend one another. Many things, they unite people. It could be your work, it could be what you're doing, it could be a particular ritual, a custom, a tradition, something that unites people together. But what happens? Even these friendships, they will not remain forever. What do we learn? That Ibrahim a.s. he said to his people, إِنَّمَا اتَّخَذْتُمْ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ أَوْسَانًا مَوَدَّةَ بَيْنِكُمْ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا ثُمَّ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ يَكْفُرُ بَعْضُكُمْ بِبَعْضُ وَيَلْعَنُ بَعْضُكُمْ بَعْضُ Today you are together, but on that day what's going to happen? You will deny one another, disown one another, and curse one another. So they are just like the spider web. They tempt you. They call you, they invite you, but what happens at the end? They leave you alone. If you look at it, a spider web, it looks so attractive, isn't it? You know, sometimes it moves with the wind very gently, or as the sunlight it shines on it, or as it rains and you can see sometimes the water drops on it. It looks so beautiful, so attractive. And many times insects, they get stuck in them. Why? Because of their beauty. زَيَّنَ لَهُمُ الشَّيْطَانُ أَعْمَالَهُمْ But when a person gets there, he's trapped, he's caught up, and he's finished. Isn't it so? That's the end. And we learn that shaitan, he was also mentioned. That was زَيَّنَ لَهُمُ الشَّيْطَانُ أَعْمَالَهُمْ فَصَدَّهُمْ عَنِ السَّبِيلِ That shaitan, he beautifies the actions for them and then he, he stops them from the way and then on the day of judgment, shaitan too will abandon people. And we see that the example of Qarun, Fir'aun, Haman is given. People who are arrogant, people who are very successful in worldly terms. But even their success is just like a spider web. It doesn't help them. It does not protect them. It does not shelter them. It does not provide refuge to them when the punishment of Allah comes. So, throughout this surah, what have we been seeing? That no one is worthy of being relied on except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when you are in a situation where you have to either obey Allah or obey someone else, and this comes up many, many times, many, many times, then what should a person prefer? Obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because if at that time he turns away from Allah and turns to anything else, nothing at all, nothing, no matter what it is, who it is, cannot protect you, cannot help you, cannot assist you. At the beginning of the surah, what did we learn? That it's impossible that a person says he's a believer and he will not be tested. This is how these tests come. From your friends, from your culture, from your family, from those who are close to you, your knowledge, your career, your success, worldly success, this is where the test comes. That what do you prefer? Who do you give preference to? Who do you love more? And over here the reality is exposed. That if you rely on any other than Allah, you're doomed, you're finished, you're headed towards failure. Anything you'd like to say with regards to these ayat? What did you think? Many times people rely on their wealth thinking that if I have money, I'll be happy. If I have children, I'll be happy. If I get married, I'll be happy. But what happens to many people? Even though they get children and they get husbands and they get families and they get houses and they get wealth, do they get happiness? No. Where can a person get happiness from? Obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is what brings true happiness to a person, contentment to a person. Nothing else is reliable. And we experience this day in and day out. That things we think we can rely on, they betray us. Isn't it? They betray you. You think that just because you have that doctor, inshallah, your surgery will go very well and your treatment will go very well. But what happens? Even the best doctor makes the biggest mistake. Just the other day somebody was mentioning about their physician in the U.S. and one of the doctors who was working with them, they made such a huge mistake, they were sued for $30 million. Just imagine. $30 million they were sued for because they made such a huge mistake. If you rely on any other than Allah, no matter what a great expert they are, they can't help you. Like for example, these days, 
it's the world of technology. It's the day of technology. People rely on electricity, but if just one electricity goes, everything will come to a stop. Your elevators won't work. Your apartment buildings, people will not be able to live there anymore. Isn't it? Cars, how will you drive them? How will you charge your phones? How will you communicate with one another? How will you do your work? So much of the work today relies on electricity, for example. But even that is unreliable. We see this, we experience this every other day, if not directly through other people, through their experiences, that nothing of this dunya can be relied on. No person, no gadget, nothing. Many times people think that just because you'll be a Muslim or you will obey Allah or you will do something that Allah has commanded, you will suffer from loss. You will suffer difficulty. You can't survive. But what do we see over here? The exact opposite. That if you turn away from Allah, disobey Him, and rely on others, then you will suffer from difficulty. I was just thinking if we were to write the qualities of what a true friend is, everybody would have their long list. And if you think about it, one of the qualities would be reliability. And we just came to learn that, you know, no person is fully reliable. And if you think about it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who we can fully rely on, who we can fully trust in. So why not befriend Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before anybody else? Okay, quickly, whoever has the microphone closest to them, they should speak first, okay? I was just thinking that those people who don't want to listen to the messengers, they should just look at the Izza and the uh, Hikmah of Allah in the heavens and the earth, because that you can see. Very true. The, the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created things, as we learned earlier, الَّذِي أَتْقَنَ كُلَّ شيء. Right? The one who has perfected everything, he has created everything with strength. And people, whatever they make, it's so weak, it's so frail. I was struck by the verse when we heard that shaitan diverts him from the right way. And sometimes it doesn't even have to be something evil or anything. Sometimes it's like your regular daily routine. Like for instance, you could be like very tired in the morning and don't feel like coming to the uh, class and then people tell you at home maybe that you should rest. And then I think it's so important to have the righteous company because you come here and then you get all the motivation because you see other people who come here despite having many children or slept even less. So I just felt that it's very important to have righteous company that motivates you to stay on the right path. Very true. I was just thinking that part of relying on Allah is that we trust His choices for us. And sometimes what we want is not exactly what's best for us. And I was thinking of um, one of my friends, her husband had to go for a business trip yesterday and he was flying. And he had to catch a connecting flight at a certain time. His first flight was severely delayed and he was going to be late for work, basically. And so he tried everything. He went to everybody in the airport, please get me on another flight that gets me to this place at this time. And nobody could help him. And he found out later on that that flight he was supposed to take, the connecting flight at a certain time, that flight got struck by lightning. So like because of missing the first flight, he ended up not being on that plane. So sometimes Allah has a better plan for us. Exactly. And this is with regards to Kauni affairs and also Shari. That sometimes when it comes to the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we think too difficult, impossible. Everybody's going to look at me. Everybody's going to stare at me. No one's going to support me. No one's going to agree with it. But what do we see? That whatever Allah has decided for us, that is best for us. Because He is Al-Hakim. We see this today. People with so much power, so much authority, finished within just one day. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, I was thinking about the ayah, الشَّيْطَانِ أَعْمَالَهُمْ And the end, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, وَكَانُوا مُسْتَبْسِرِينَ So we learn now the knowledge of Quran. So we should do it for the sake of Allah when we teach others we shouldn't do it for show off if we do it for show off it's just going to be waste that's why we are mustafsirin right now because we're learning we have to be careful so we don't waste it so this is the completion of your 20 juz alhamdulillah falillahi alhamd all praise to Allah and um, if you look at it so far in two thirds of the Quran that we have learned many many things we have learned many lessons isn't it? We've learned about ahkam, we've learned about aqidah, we've learned about ibadat, about akhlaqiyat, about history. So many things we have learned. But if we have learned this one thing, what? Prefer Allah above anyone else. Allah's obedience above anyone else's obedience. His hukum over anyone else's hukum. His choice over anyone else's choice. 
then we have learned something. And if we have not learned this lesson, then we need to learn. Because this is something extremely important, extremely essential. Because unless and until a person has his yaqeen, has his understanding, he cannot make the right choices. He cannot follow the commands of Allah. Because sometimes his friends will come in the middle, sometimes his nafs will come in the middle, sometimes his parents will come in the middle. Something or the other will come in the middle preventing him. But if a person has understood this, that I have to, I must give preference to Allah, then he will be fine. Then he will be successful. Then he will be able to do something. Because it's this lesson that we forget, which is why we slip. Which is why we forget. Which is why we don't do what we know we should be doing. Even though we could be wakanu mustabsirin, but still what happens? We don't do what we're supposed to because we don't understand this lesson. So this is the greatest lesson that we can understand. Anything you'd like to share with regards to the completion of your 20 juz or anything else? Assalamu alaikum everybody. Wa alaikum <laughs> I would like to share something with you that if you obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Inshallah ta'ala, biznillah, nothing will happen to you. Have a complete trust on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So once we were traveling to U.S. and I was wearing niqab. And on the airport they told me, when they saw me, they put the passport like stamp on my kids. But when they saw me, they said, okay, be on the one side. So I went on one side and they said, you want a female assistant or a male? I said, of course I want a female assistant. So then they called the lady and uh, they took us inside. And my next flight was in 15 minutes, 20 minutes. And I was telling them, so they said, you know, we will go through whole checkups and everything. I said, it's okay. I'm making a story short. It was very painful, but they make us sit for two and a half hours. And uh, just for nothing, but they took us to in a good place, you know, big, huge drawing room, sofas. They were giving us coffees, drink, but they were not letting us go. And I told her that, you know, my flight, my sister will be waiting. So she said, no, but we have to, you know, follow the rules, so you have to stay. So, but continuously I was reciting Ayat al-Kursi, and I was asking, Hasbunallah wa name al-Wakil. But the policemen were coming, they were taking my husband inside, you know, two police big men. I mean, they're taking my husband, my children, and I'm just looking at them. So they were trying to scare as much as they can in two and a half hours. And uh, uh, then the lady came and she said, that, okay, you can take the second flight, but we are not going to leave your husband. So I said, I can't move without my husband. I will go with my husband, You whatever you do, or you send me back. It's okay with me. Subhanallah, you will not believe trusting Allah and the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. After, like, they did their best, <laughs> they told me, okay, now you can go. You all family can go. I said, my flight already I missed. She said, no, we don't know what happened to that plane that you were traveling. It did not move a bit. That flight stayed two and a half hours outside waiting. There was no weather condition. There was nothing at all. 100% everything was good. And you know how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then take us to the, uh, to the plane like a princess is going, you know, like a great carpet. They took us from the special place. They were like, carrying our luggages and everything. And we were walking like princes. Believe me, subhanAllah. And then we got this. And the people who were waiting outside, they were like, you know, how they were sitting, crying, children and this and that. And nobody knows what happened to the plane. Then when we sit inside, the pilot was saying, we don't know what was wrong. There's nothing. Our plane was 100% okay. So always rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and trust Him and obey Him. Nothing will happen to you, inshallah. And you see, if at this time you started getting angry and you started losing your sabr, and you started yelling at them and asking them, you know, what's the reason and why are you doing this and don't you understand? And A, you would lose your ajr. B, it would make the whole experience so miserable for you. But at these times when you rely only on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then what happens? It calms you down. You know that Allah will take care of you. He will manage everything for you. And you know that you won't suffer. It gives you contentment. It gives you peace. It makes you calm. That nothing else can give you. Anything you'd like to share with regards to the completion of the 20 juz of the Qur'an? How do you feel? Assalamu alaikum. I was just going to share my experience. Before learning the Qur'an, you know how people tell you something and all that stuff and, and you get confused and you don't want to do anything because you don't know what it is. But right now, like you know, as you learn so much things and your connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala becomes stronger, nothing 
that anyone can tell you anything that would stop you from doing what you're doing. Like, you know, I've heard so many things like, I feel, I think that, like, you know, I should have given the choice of, I said, you know what, when it comes to the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have no choice. After all, what power do you have against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And this is what I've learned so far, like, you know, that the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so powerful that you can't even say, I think and I, this is my choice. You cannot do that because, like, you know, you have no power against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Any moment you can die. And you don't know if you're prepared to die. And this is what I'm saying to me. Like, you know, even though I walk out there and I'm the only different one. And people are like bashing us, our, our religion, our clothes and all that stuff. Like, nothing else. Like, I don't really care. Like, I would just walk. And it's like, but this has given me courage and, fe- strength. Courage and then I feel more sorry for them. That they don't know. It's like, you know, they don't know that they don't know. So it it makes me feel very, very sorry for them. Like, you know, because, like, how can I help them? This is what I'm thinking. Like, you know, every time they say something bad to me, like, I just pray for them. And I was like, I was thinking, how can I help them? And this is the power of the Quran, that, like, you know, that you learn how to be remorseful for other people. Assalamu alaikum. alaikum. Well, I guess for me, uh, you know, before I joined, I guess a lot of people were telling me, even myself, I thought, five days a week, nine to three, two kids, not a good idea. I don't think it's possible. But subhanAllah, I'm still here, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Uh, My baby was four months old when I first joined. He's 15 months now, mashallah. And I'm still coming, alhamdulillah. Allah makes it easy for us when you have the will. You know, I didn't know how to read Arabic, and people were telling me, you should take Arabic first, you should learn how to read, and then join the course. Alhamdulillah, it just comes together. When you want to be here, Allah makes it easy. And we all have our own challenges. And the main thing is just to keep focused and to know that we are here for a reason. And it's actually a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, again, we're Alhamdulillah, there's so many of us here. And just keep on going. Alhamdulillah. And we should really look up to these mothers who every day bring their children and just the other day I came early and I was watching Sister She came with both her children and I was amazed that so early she comes with her children and it's so difficult for us to get out of our houses with just one child or with no child. But mashallah she was here and I was so amazed by that. May Allah give her the strength to continue and increase and give her barakah in her efforts and accept them. This is a huge thing. Coming I mean, with two children, this is very challenging. And we need to understand and appreciate their efforts. And we need to get inspired by them. That just because we find it difficult one morning, we're tired, we went to a wedding last night, we had a party, we can't come, we do what we can't do our lesson, this is not an excuse. We will be tested. These challenges will come in different different ways, in different forms. And we can't give up. If Allah has given us a tawfiq to come this far, twenty juz then we need to be strong, we need to hold on so that we can complete this journey. And every day there could be challenges coming and sitting through class or doing our lesson or taking the test or doing the assignment. But look at the people of the past. Look at Ibrahim a.s. Look at Lut a.s. Musa a.s. Sharib a.s. The challenges they face, nothing that we're seeing, nothing that we can witness. So we need to be strong and we need to continue. We can't give up. And we can't become lazy anymore and be negligent with our work at all. There's no excuse. No excuse. So make a promise now. Make this firm resolution that you have to do this with perfection, with ihsan. Ihsan. This should be our resolution now for the final term. Because if there has been any negligence in the past, we cannot repeat the same mistakes again. If we've missed out on any lessons, we've missed out on our assignments and classes, we cannot continue the same way. Difficulties will come, but we cannot give up. With the knowledge, ibadah needs to come because, as I mentioned to you earlier, physical weakness is there. However, your spiritual strength will enable you to overcome that. It will give you the strength to overcome your physical weakness. And your spiritual strength, how will you develop that? Through ibadah. That when you're weak, 
Pray to Allah. Make dua to Allah. Do your adhkar. Pray salah. Pray muffled. Recite the Quran. And if you notice in this surah so far we have learned Urbuduhu, Urbuduhu so many times. Because this is very, very important. Without it you cannot develop spiritual strength. And if you don't have that strength you cannot continue. You cannot continue. At one point your nafs will become a problem for you. At another point your body will become a problem for you. Other people will become a distraction for you. When you have a strong connection with Allah, you rely on Him, you trust on Him, you will be able to continue. May Allah give the ability to each and every single one of you to inshallah complete this journey with ihsan. Not just for the sake of completing it, not just for the sake of finishing it, but with ihsan. So that when we complete it, we have something with us. We have something in our hands. We can pass it on to others. And we have that confidence. We have that iman. We have that determination. Because there is no point in going through it without gaining anything from it. We listen to the recitation. مثل الذين اتخذوا من دون الله أولياء كمثل العنكبوت كمثل العنكبوت اتخذت بيتا وإن أولا نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك نستغفرك ونتوب إليك السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته